So yesterday I was at the worm farm and I've already done a video on pot worms before, but it was a short, like 45 second video. I figured I would do a real one and tell you all the things I've learned about pot worms in my research. Just have it all in one place and get a good, cool look at these little things up close. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to bust out my mini microscope again and see if we can get these to sit still long enough to get a good look at them. Now these things, I got a pretty good pocket on them. I mean, you can see them just all over the inside of the bag too. They just reproduce by the thousands. There is a pot worm up close. Kind of translucent. A writhing ball of them. So, pot worms are cousins of earthworms. They're not in the same family. I can't pronounce the family that they're in, but I will put it in the description. They are fine in your worm bin. Your everyone's worm bin will have them. Um, it's just one of those things. They were already if you added any soil to your worm bin, they were already in there, just probably not in high numbers. They're kind of everywhere, especially these terrestrial versions. There's a lot more aquatic versions than there are terrestrial versions or species. There's actually a species of pot with Potworm, well, they're not potworms in that species, but a related species in the same family that is an ice worm that actually can't really live above freezing or above a certain temperature, or else they kind of just fall apart. Oh, he's got some food in him. That's pretty cool. Since they're white, you can see everything they've been eating. So, potworms are not a bad thing to see in your worm bin, um, or an uncommon thing. If you see them, don't freak out. So the only time you should really be concerned about potworms is when there's an, an especially an, an abundance of them, where you start seeing them in you know in the thousands or millions range, because they're going to be there no matter what. So getting rid of them completely is a a waste of time. So potworms thrive. They they can live in conditions that overlap a lot with conditions that red wigglers and European nightcrawlers could live in. The issue with potworms and the why they're good at indicating when there's something wrong with your bin is they thrive in conditions that red worms and European nightcrawlers don't really like and can actually end up killing them. Um, potworms prefer very acidic and very wet environments. Um, or environments where there's a lot of fermentation going on, which you know can lead to higher acidity. And um, they can, when they, when the environment reaches you know things that they prefer, they can explode in population into the millions very, very quick. You'll see um, if you search for videos on YouTube of people who raise these, you will see. Oh, we might be looking at the face of one actually. That's kind of cool. You'll see they can almost turn into like. It, it's kind of it's pretty gross. It's just a white mass of worms. They can live in really really high densities. So potworms are they're segmented worm just like European nightcrawlers and and uh, red worms. They're just in a different family. They even have I'm trying to get a good view of it, but uh, you can kind of see them sometimes when it moves. They, they even have the spikes. That uh, regular, oh, there they are, right there. Yep, potworms got the spikes too. Doesn't look like two rows like um, the red the red worms had though. It looks like just a single row on each side. Huh, pretty cool. So if you start seeing a lot of potworms in your bins or in your farms, you um, you can either guess. You can either see that it's too wet or, you know, it's too acidic. And um, 
a lot of people say, oh, to get rid of potworms, you know, do the bread and milk trick. When really, all you need to do is just change the conditions of your bin because you don't want them to be bad anyway. And having potworms isn't bad in itself. They compost and break down the material in the worm bin just as well as the other worms do. In fact, it just becomes even it becomes a finer material. Some people actually prefer it. Um, I'm actually thinking of taking these that I got from the farm and starting a new bin at my house where I can just throw the acidic stuff, um, like all the pineapple we eat and um, all the oranges we eat and stuff like that and the onions and you know, breads and starches and stuff, and then just focus on, I mean, I told you in my last a couple videos ago that my current worm bins are no rule worm bins. I may kind of make them a little stricter and actually uh, start doing it right and have a pot worm bin for the stuff I shouldn't be tossing to my red worms and my European night crawlers. Yeah, a lot of people will raise pot worms for um to feed fish. They're really common for that. They're supposedly really easy to raise. It's amazing how small these things are too. If you look, there's my index finger, and that's actually a pretty average size pot worm right there. I've seen some that get around two inches long, but usually they're about an inch long like that. And they're really, really active, usually. They're pretty cool. Let's see if I can focus. So they live in really, really high density. You see one and you think, oh, that's not many. And then you start looking and you start seeing a lot more of them. Here's a good one. Making a break for it. Away from the light. I like how they're just kind of translucent. You can see you're almost right through them. Pretty cool looking. Their segments aren't as pronounced as regular earthworms. So ways when you get a, a, a potworm infestation, instead of pulling the worms out, all you really need to do is either add some eggshells or lime or whatever you use to, to raise your pH and get it out of the, the acidic, you know, get it less acidic or, um, you know, dry it out. Oftentimes you have to do both. Oftentimes it's a double issue. Here's a really small one. It's a really clear shot of his face. And the face looks just like a regular worm. There's more pot worm spikes. There's the shot. There they are. These are a lot more uh, wiggly than red wigglers, surprisingly. <laughs> I have to kind of find one that's just deciding to stay in one spot and then get some good footage of him while he's there because they get away from me pretty quick. A lot longer and a lot skinnier than regular worms too in regards to proportions. So to kind of finish what I was saying earlier, if you got an infestation of potworms, don't go through the process, at least this is my opinion is don't go through the process of removing the potworms because, I mean, really it's 
not their fault they're there. It, um, it's always the conditions of the band that dictate whether they're going to be there in high numbers or not. No, oh, that one's actually pooping. Um, and so it's just best to change your conditions of your band because that's going to be better for your other types of worms anyway. And you don't have to go through the process of removing a whole bunch of worms. They can just die naturally. The nutrients of their bodies can return to the bin. And um, and you can rest assured knowing that you've fixed the conditions of your bin to be more favorable for your other worms. But really, a little bit of pot worms are great. They break down smaller stuff. They um, eat mainly fungus and bacteria, just like regular worms, only just on a much smaller scale. And um, they don't really, unless they're in the millions and you see most more worms than you do vermicompost in your bins, they're not really out competing the other worms for food. It's only when they get really, really, really bad that they do that. Um, but if that happens, you're already in trouble in a bunch of other ways by then anyway. It's kind of a mass of two or three worms. Can't quite tell how many. It's cool how clear they are. From what I can tell, they can survive much colder temperatures than red worms and European night, night crawlers can as well. I'm not sure how they reproduce. I did a lot of research trying to figure out and I couldn't get a clear answer. I'm assuming they reproduce asexually just, you know, or hermaphroditically just like regular worms do. I saw one article that said they can be fragmented and reproduce that way, but I couldn't find anything to back that up or prove it. Oh, hey, there's a space. They're a lively bunch. I'm trying to get an ultra close up of a pot worm. Mostly so I can try and see his segments. Maybe they aren't that segmented. doesn't like the light. I wouldn't either. If that was a worm. It's a really bright light. He's balling up, so it's hard to get focus on any one part of him. I wonder if that's like a defense mechanism they have. I've noticed when I pull them out of the ground, they tend to roll into a ball almost, coil up like a snake. Pretty interesting. This is this is that same one that was was doing super up close. Two, I guess. Some, pot worms almost seem angry in the way they crawl around. There's a very small one. And then one next to it. Anyway, to recap, potworms related to earthworms and, you know, the regular compost worms we use, but different family, not very many terrestrial versions, and this is just one of them. There's, from what I can gather, thousands of different species of this type of worm. And uh, the reason, I guess I didn't get into the reason they're called potworms is because they were, were seen a lot in potted plants, so not a really 
original or exciting name. Um, if you have an infestation of them, your bed is either too acidic or too wet or both. And um, you just need to amend your bed and make it better and they, your, their numbers will go down. You don't really have to worry too much about them out commuting your worms for food. If they get to that point, then your worms are already in trouble for other reasons anyway. Um, they're friends of your worm bin. You want some of them. They have a, there's an overlap where your worms will be fine and the pot worms will be fine. So if you see some, you don't need to stress about it. You don't need to get rid of them. They're just part of the ecosystem. This might be the smallest one I've seen yet. For reference, this is construction paper that I'm filming this on, black construction paper. So that texture you see in the background is the construction paper. And there he goes. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and uh, more subjects, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be taking some of my older footage of, you know, mites and other worms and and, uh, and maggots and, you know, and uh, springtails and things like that. And I'll be doing a, a video on each one. Should be a lot of fun. And if you like this microscopic footage and you want to make some of your own, I'll put a link to this microscope in the description. Um, it's pretty cheap, about 22 bucks or 23 bucks on Amazon right now. Uh, totally worth it. I've loved every second of it. It's been a lot of fun, but I'm also kind of a nerd when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, I just think it's fascinating and cool to see these little things up close and all the little details involved in them and just how they live their life. It just... It's just way cool. Can't really get enough of it. Hoping he turns so I can get another shot of those spikes. And I'm almost wondering if they just have one row. You can see his guts and stuff inside moving, all his food inside him. There they are. All right. Thanks again. Thanks for watching.